Thanks, everyone. Uh, I'm from Intel. And uh, we actually have uh, a pretty large Spark team at Intel working on the open source development of Spark for more than three years. Today, I talk about the experience and the lesson learned uh, for using graphics to do very large scale, real world graph applications, graph analysis. So, since Anka already gave a pretty good overview of GraphX, I don't need to spend a lot of time on this page. Uh, to recap, GraphX uh, provides a framework, uh, a graph parallel framework on top of the Spark data parallel execution engine. And uh, it uh, actually recasts many of the graph op optimizations as those well distributed uh, data flow operations, uh, as for instance, the view the, and the join and so on. So basically, the, the user works in the graph abstraction. You have a graph, we have edges, you have nodes, and the, and the hook. And the, the so nodes are represented as, a, as a vertex RDD, and you have edge RDDs, and you're creating a view, a triplet view based on those RDDs. And uh, now, this is page rank. So basically, that's a canonical graph application for any graph research paper, if you look at it, or any example of any graph applications, you point to, to the page rank. So essentially, you have a large while loop. In each iteration, you do, you, you, as I mentioned, you, you, you're using the graph API, you're doing a aggregate messages to compute the update, and then you join the update with the graph to compute a new, new rank graph, and then you just iterate. And uh, um, I talk, in this talk, I share some of the experiences of running this type of graph applications, uh, real world, very large scale graph, billions of edges, and it runs a thousand iterations instead of maybe 10 or 20 iterations you normally see in a testing environment. And uh, by, by the way, uh, this is actually pretty uh, standard uh, large scale iterative Spark, uh, Spark applications. Uh, so for instance, a lot of machine learning applications actually have the, about the same characteristics. So this experience actually is applicable to many general large scale Spark applications. So, the first problem, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty standard application, page rank. But uh, the first, first problem when you run it on very large scale, billions of edges, thousand iterations, you will most likely run into a stack overflow problem. I mean, it's, uh, you, you, you will see that in actually many other very large scale machine learning applications if, if, if you not do it correctly. So as you can see, there is, you're showing the, the, in the logs, there is a stack overflow errors by the JBM, and uh, when you see that, you, you know you probably have a web scale application. So, this, so the root cause of this error is essentially is due to the serialization of RDD objects, because you are creating a very large, uh, very long lineage between those RDDs, because you are running a very, very, very large iteration, number of iterations in applications. So there are basically two workarounds. You can actually allocate a large JVM stack frame using the XSS parameter, so you can actually work around this issue. But the problem, the, the, the caveat here is that uh, as you, the, the lineage of the IDD becomes extreme, extremely long, you actually will suffer from pretty large serialization overhead. Or, I think the current recommended approach is you, you, you need to checkpoint your RDD periodically. Now let's look at the checkpoint. So essentially, this is a checkpoint, right? You, you, you checkpoint uh, the graph uh, every, say, 10 iterations, and then you compute your data based on, compute your, your, your applications based on that checkpoint the graph, and uh, supposedly it should fix the problem. So the so caveat here is, a, is that, uh, as we all know, Spark is a has a lazy execution mo model. So it, instead of actually checkpoint, when you, when you, instead of checkpoint the graph, when you, when you call the checkpoint, it actually just mask the graph or the underlying RDDs for checkpoint. So it's just a mask, pre a flag, flag on that RDD. And it will do the actual checkpoint when, when it computes the RDD. And now, here's the issue. So if you look at the code, it will only do, it will only call checkpoint, do checkpoint once. And it will set a flag saying whether I have already called this checkpoint function or not. So if you 
call the checkpoint on the graph or on the RDD after you actually have computed the, 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 the RDD, it's actually useless because the, if you look at the code carefully, you, are, you have already actually called the do checkpoint function and it set the flag to be true and even though the checkpoint flag is not set. And later on when you do that, uh, it's actually useless because it will do nothing for you. And uh, so actually the people have actually have built some, 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 some help functions in MLLab, and periodical graph checkpoint, and uh, the, it's recommended that you actually use that routine to manage the persistence uh, caching checkpoint uh, of, of the graph for you. And uh, also, it's still required that uh, when you need to actually call the update uh, graph function uh, immediately after you generate a new graph and before you do anything on that graph. Otherwise, you, 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 you will potentially run into issue that uh, you, you just mark the graph of checkpoint, but it's actually not get checkpointed. So if, for details, you, you can refer to that uh, help function and to get, to get a better understanding of the problem. Okay, the second issue is that uh, checkpoint only makes sure that uh, the long lineage of the RDD gets uh, somehow did break get some broken and it's, you, it's instead of depending on your parent RDD, the, the checkpoint RDD will depend on a checkpoint file so that you don't have a very extremely long lineage. But that's only works, that only works for the RDD dependence, that is the parent of RDD. There could be the cases that instead of using the parent or dependency of the RDD, you may, you may, you may write, a, you may define your own RDD which actually refer to other RDDs through your member variables or uh, other, other methods. So in this example, it's, it's a, actually a simplified, simplified version of the zip partition RDD, if you're familiar with the code. You, you have the, this, the zipped RDD has its dependency, its parent, but it also has two member variables, RDD1 and RDD2, and uh, those two member variables still need to be theorized but, and even if you checkpoint on the zipped RDD, these two member variables uh, actually will still get, uh, get theorized even if you checkpoint that. It does not help. And so, so in this case, actually, there is, again, a few different patterns. So for instance, you try to ref, refer to other RDDs in, 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 in the implementation through the dependencies instead of using other temporary variables. Uh, you, you should uh, make the uh, member variables uh, transient whenever possible, and uh, in this case, if you have to do the reference through the member variables, you probably want to clear that uh, after it is checkpointed. Otherwise, you will need to run into other problems, other types of problems, and uh, there is a Spark uh, Jira issue. You can look at that, and uh, it's, it's, it's kind of tricky, so, so when you define your own RDD, it's kind of complex. Sometimes it's become complex if you do not follow this design pattern. Now let's say you did everything correct. So you, you correct your checkpoint, your graph, your RDD, everything works fine. Now let's look at the cost of a checkpoint. So let, we, we did a simple experiment run the page rank on the Twitter graph downloaded from the standard network, the Stanford network database. And if run one iteration for the page rank is about 100 seconds. And the checkpoint in the vertex RDD takes about 20 seconds. And the checkpoint in the edge RDD takes about 140 seconds. So it's actually still a, 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 it's a considerable amount of overhead associated with the checkpointing. Because essentially, when you do a checkpoint, you need to compute all your RDD data and write it to a checkpoint file. And the larger graph, it actually can be pretty high overhead. And on page, page rank actually has a very small state because you, you just, uh, you just uh, maintain the rank for each vertex. And for other large models such as LDA and so on, you, actually the state could, could be pretty large. So, Let's take a close look at the RDD lineage to understand why, the, why this very extremely long RDD lineage comes from. So this is the page rank program. So, so, you, so you start with, a, so you have an existing graph which has vertex RDD and the edge RDD. So first thing you do, you essentially you do a aggregate message compute to get the update. 
and then send you to a join vertex with the previous uh, added vertex to produce a new added vertex. And then you get the new added vertex and the, the previous edge RDD, the vertex added edge RDD, and what you do is actually you do a join to get the triplet view. So that's, that's basically what it does. And this, this, this runs recursively or iteratively, so essentially you have every iteration, you, you just go through this process. So this is essentially the, your, your ID lineage, I mean, at a high level for your, for your, for your page rank applications. And uh, on this graph, the vertex IDD and edge IDD are supposed to be cached in memory to, to, for best performance. And uh, the green arrows in, in, in this graph actually shows the shuffle dependency uh, between the different uh, RDD sets. The, 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 the new RDD is computed by shuffle the data from the previous RDD. So in, so, so in, in the actual implementation, it only depends on the shuffle file, not the, the parent uh, RDD. You do not need to serialize this parent RDD. But still, there are two extremely long RDD lineage. Uh, one for vertex and one for edge. So you, you basically to, to compute the new vertex, you, you get a lineage from vertex RDD zero to vertex RDD one to vertex RDD two and so on. And uh, the same thing for the edge RDD. So this is essentially due to um, basically where, where as, as mentioned before, graphics try to do a lot and uh, try to simulate a lot of graph system op optimizations uh, on this uh, spark data parallel. Engine so that uh, uh, what there is a, for instance, when you compute the new vertex RDD, you do a join of the new update and the previous vertex RDD, and uh, to make sure you get the best performance, the, where the previous vertex RDD is located becomes the join site of this join. That is, the update is shuffled from different place to the previous vertex RDD, but the vertex RDD is actually always do an in-place join, so it's always keep the keep the in that location and then not get shuffled. So at the end of the day, you get a very long chain of in-place uh, update of the, I mean, kind of simulating the in-place update of the edge ID, which is essential for the audio graph optimizations. So, and at the, but it, it's it's pretty good for your performance. You eliminate all those uh, shuffles and so on, but it creates it's a very extremely long lineage which is difficult to optimize. And uh, of course, there are still possible improvements, uh, say, all those uh, vertex and edge identities are supposed to be cached. So instead, of actually, when you do the actual computing, you, you just read from memory. So there is, you, probably you can leverage that to make sure that, to, to, to make sure you can optimize those long lineage. And the other po possibility is that uh, in each edge RDD, you have both the edge attributes as well as the replicated vertex to, to build the, your, your triplet view. And that replicated vertex actually just depends on the vertex you just computed. So as you can see, the edge RDD n plus one is a result of the vertex RDD n plus one and the edge RDD n. So you, you do not actually need to write all those replicated vertex out. You, you can just reconstruct it. So you, if, it's, it's, if, if it can be constructed in such a way that it does not depend on those vertex RDD. But those are the possible optimizations you can carry out. And all the graphics framework can be carried out to actually further improve this overhead. So. In summary, I mean, um, the graphics actually provide a pretty good graph for compu parallel computing framework on top of the Spark data parallel engine. And uh, there is, uh, you still need to do some of the careful scaling optimization work, but we have actually have been very successful to apply it to some of the very large scale real world graph applications, uh, billions of edges, thousands of iterations. So page, uh, it's just a show page rank in this uh, talk, but uh, there are actually many other more complex graph algorithms we have actually have been running on top of this type of problems. So that's, that's all I have. So any questions?
So we're actually going to have to take questions offline for this talk because we're at time. So uh, let's thank Jason one more time. <laughs>